Hello everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider, and today we're going to be doing another fantastic beading tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous crystal bracelet that looks absolutely stunning, but actually is ridiculously simple. So great even for beginners and stuff. But the nice thing about it is that it looks really, really classy, really, really sparkly because we've got some fantastic beads that we're using in this particular design as well. So I think we're going to have lots and lots of fun. Now, if you are brand new here, don't forget, of course, I go live every uh, Friday, which is today at 3 p.m. UK time. So whatever, if you're watching live right now at 3 p.m. in the UK, I think that's maybe the clocks change. So maybe it's a little bit different time in, in the US than usual. Usually it's like 10 a.m. or something, but we'll see. Someone from America, comment in and let me know what time it is where you are so I can, I can figure that out. Uh, ladies in Australia already emailed saying it's uh, messaged in saying it's about 2 a.m. So quite late if you're in Australia. But of course, this is also going to be on catch up. So for those of you who are watching on catch up, welcome. Thank you for joining. Even though it's not live anymore, I'm glad you're here. But definitely comment in, say hello, and let me know how you're going. And for those of you, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. And maybe even drop us a comment down below and let me know what you think of the design. So first things first. Oh, yes. So people are commenting in 10 a.m. in Texas now, uh, 11 in Montreal. So I'm going to say it's 11 a.m. in New York as well, which makes me think it's probably 8 a.m. in L.A. at the minute. That'll probably change, though. Um, but if you want to know exactly when we're going to be live, the best way is checking the link in the description to sign up to our email newsletter. Now, uh, let's let's have a look at the design that we're going to be making. There's a kit as per usual, of course. And like we often do for the first week that we are presenting it from my video, uh, it will be on discount. So if you want to go and get it at 15% off, you can do that. I will tell you exactly how a little bit later on in the video, but essentially there's a link in the discount uh, in the in the description, and it will tell you exactly how to do it. Now, let's, before we begin, do some greetings. I see we've already got almost 50 people joining us. Uh, not that many have hit the like button, though. So like, 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 hit that button. I want to see it. Um, who do we have here? Amber was first cab off the rank. She said, hello, everyone from Silver Hill, Alabama. Welcome to you, Amber. I'm glad you could be here. Stacy uh, messaged in. This is how I knew that the time was different. She said, I forgot about the time change. Well, I'm glad it was an hour later rather than an hour earlier for you all. Otherwise, you would have come on an hour into the stream. And then I would have been like, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye. And you would be like, oh, no. Anyway, uh, we also have... Misha from Kansas City. I think I said that right. I hope so. Uh, Rhonda is here. Lovely to see you, Rhonda. Staying up till two in the morning to watch. Thank you, Rhonda, for joining us. Uh, we have Madonna as well. Irina is here watching on Facebook, seeing as we're live simultaneously both on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we also have Aniko, who is in Montreal. Heather is here. We have someone who's watching from Israel, so welcome to you as well. We have Renska, who's become a regular now watching from Holland. Welcome back. Lovely to see you again. We have Trish over in Ireland. Linda is here from South Carolina, uh, South California. Uh, we have Carol. Uh, here we go. And then we have another one here, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that one, just because I'm sure it would be massacring your lovely name. Uh, but she is watching us from Poland. So welcome to you as well. Um, then we have loads of people here as well commenting in. Um, but anyway, if you're completely brand new, never watched before, uh, let me know. Ah, oh, this one here, though. Check this out. 4, 4 p.m. in Nigeria. Welcome to Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining us. So far, you're winning as the person who's furthest away. So thank you, all of you, for joining um, but yeah, uh, let me know where you all are and uh, comment in, especially if you're brand new, comment in and I'll give you a little shout out. So now let's take a look at the design. Like I said, it is super, super, super sparkly. There's six different colors, which two of them are completely, completely brand new. Let me just pop over to the screen just here. 
Here we are. So we have this one I really, really like. This one here, it's like a purple with the silver. So you can do it with just one color. Most of our kits are one color. One of the brand new kits, though, is two colors. This one is like a silver and pink, which I think is a really, really nice one just because it has that lovely, lovely pop of pink in there to give you a little something. Uh, we also have the green. So like I said, you can see you can use all different textures. These are with like matte cubes as well which look lovely they give you that really really nice iridescence but in a matte fashion uh we have opaque crystals as well like these ones you can see they really really catch the light and then i also have and i don't know why the uh the purple doesn't want to show properly on the camera for some reason uh but it's I've got a lovely, lovely purple, and I've changed the seed bead. It used to be with gold, but I've made it with silver now, and it's definitely much brighter than the camera makes it seem. It's a gorgeous, rich, amethysty purple color. I think it's because it has, like, this white coating on it, so it really is just, like, shimmering and catching the light and making it look much darker where it's actual glass. But anyway, that's the purple one as well. Then we also have the brand new one, which is this gorgeous bluey, greeny, azure color. And then the last one, which is different from all the others, is a gorgeous striped one. Now, ignore the seed beads at the minute, because this was just my practice piece. I, I realized I left the demo piece I'd been making upstairs. So I'm going to work on this one and use the correct seed bead, which is this combination just here, which is our demonstration colorway for now. Uh, and I'm also going to demonstrate with this lovely greeny, bluey one as well. So uh, these are the two different ones I'll be demonstrating with. Like I said, all of these are available on the website. And for the next week, there is possibility to get yourself a lovely 15% discount as well. Um, so yeah, the things that you're going to need, you're going to need essentially two strands worth, which I think is somewhere in the region of about 200 of these three mil cubes because that is for doing it sort of like a, a three width, which you'll understand what I mean by like three row width. Uh, you could do it wider if you wanted to. Essentially one strand will get you like one and a half widths. So two strand does three, a third strand, you know, it's, it's up to, uh, you how wide you would do this but essentially the technique can be made nice and thin if you want to do it thin you could do it wider or wider or wider or wider i'm going to show you the basic technique and then you can use that to do it in any way that you like now as well you don't have to use the cubes but i find that they are perfect for this because they're pretty much the exact same height as two of the seed beads. So the seed beads just here, these are size 10 preciosas. You can also use size 11s as well, if you prefer, if you're uh, if you're more of a Mayuki fan or a, a Toho fan, you can use those as well. Um, those are entirely possible, but essentially, if you want to do it in the stripe version, you just get one strand of each color, which we have those on our website as well. Again, link is in the description. Go check it out if you want to. Now, I see we have people coming up as well uh, with new people. Uh, one that just popped up, which I saw, Sylvia is from Israel, is watching for the first time, I think. And there was somebody else, Sherry who says, I'm new. Welcome to you as well, Sherry. One from YouTube, one from Facebook. That will do for now. The other ones I'll just have to ignore for now. But anyway, uh, just like Rhonda here, if you have a question, if you put a big fat Q at the beginning, it's easy for me to spot them and I can answer them for you. So Rhonda says, is it possible to get that beautiful green with goldish seed beads? Yes, it is. It is available on the website. If you want to go, check out the link in the description and you can get it from there, Rhonda. Uh, okay. Now, let's begin. I think we've done enough chatting. Let's do some demonstrating now, shall we? So like I said, we're going to be working to start with. I'm going to show you how to do it with the two colors. Why not? Uh, we're going to go slightly more interesting this time, rather than just doing it with the plain, which do you prefer the plain or do you prefer the stripe? Let me know. I want to know which one you think is more interesting. But just because I think it's a little bit different, and the technique is exactly the same. I think doing it with two colors will be fun. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate with. So just grab yourself out 
your little bead. Hi to Kelly, by the way, from Tahoe, who's just joined us over on YouTube, and Jackie, who is on Facebook. Thank you for joining as well. So anyway, I'm going to just grab myself a few of these little beads, just undo my strand. Obviously, when beads come in strands, it's like buying a tube of paint. You don't want to keep them on this. They're not strong enough for that. Um, so you just take them straight off the strand, which you can use scissors, but I like to just undo it at the end so that I can redo them if I want to. And essentially, just grab yourself out some of your beads. And if you're going to do it with two colors, you can do that too. But actually, do you know what? I might start with one color just because It'll make it extra clear, and then we'll go on from there to two color, and then I'll show you how to graduate it down as well for adding in your clasp. So first things first, just to make it extra, extra, extra easy, let's not assume anybody has any knowledge whatsoever. We're going to go, and that I find is the better way to do the tutorials is assuming, never assume that somebody has any information. I want to teach you from the absolute scratch beginning. So first things first, I'm going to start with this color here because I've got the beads just here in my hand. So grab out a lovely pile of your beads and then a lovely pile of your seed beads. Now, obviously, a bead mat is great because you can just pour the beads out and they don't roll around. If you pour them straight onto a normal table, they will probably go everywhere. So just be careful about that one. Um, and then we're going to grab ourselves some thread. The thread that you'll get with your kit is not this color. I'm just choosing this one so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm using like a, a bright blue just here. And then we're going to take a beading needle and just thread it onto the end, which I'll just give it a little cut, which you're probably going to need to change threads a couple of times. So grab yourself at least a meter's worth uh, to whatever is comfortable for you, and then just sort of work with it at that length, because we will have to change at some point or another to continue on, which I will show you how to do that as well. So um, hi, by the way, to Christina, who's just sent us in a comment. She says, aloha from Waikiki. Welcome from uh, from Hawaii. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Christina. What time is it where you are? It's probably very, very early in the morning, I would think. So anyway, once you have your needle and thread, we're going to grab ourselves. First, we'll start with a cube. Then we're going to go with two of our seed beads, okay? So this is how we start. It is very, very simple. Let's zoom in so we can really see what I'm doing here. Two uh, first a cube, then two seed beads. We're going to pull that all the way through, and we're going to leave ourselves a bit of a tail, which we can use to add our clasp section a bit later. But for now, I'm going to just pass through those again, and I'm going to be exiting just from this little cube, just here. So when you see that, you can see my thread is coming out the bottom of this cube and out the top of this cube. At this point, usually what I would say is to then go down this bead and then you continue, but I'm going to do it slightly differently than usual, and you'll see why in a second. So from here, we're going to pick up two more seed beads. So we're going to go one and two. I'm going to switch over to right hand and left hand view between each one, by the way. So currently I'm in left hand view, but I will flick between the two. So now that we've done this, you can see I'm going to just pick up two more of these seed beads. My thread is exiting from this side. I'm holding it nice and tight with my fingers here. We're going to come around, and with those two beads, we're going to loop around and through this bead once more. And we're going to just pull that tight, and that's going to add two beads on the other side of our cube. So it doesn't matter which side you go down now, but we're going to go down just here. And whoops, got caught on the edge of my table. There we are. Pull that nice and tight. If it gets a little bit caught, that's fine. Just give it a tug, tug, tug. And there we go. And that is what we want. So we've got two beads on this side, a cube in the middle, and two beads on that side. Now we're going to pick up another one of our cube beads. And see where we're exiting at the bottom of this bead just here. We're going to loop around to the other side. And we're going to go down both of those beads and pull it all the way through until that little cube is sitting 
next to our other beads. So we're sort of creating like a little a row of beads. So cubes and then cubes and then seed beads, cubes and then seed beads, cubes and then seed beads. So now let's just go from these seed beads and across into the bottom of this little bit just here and up this cube just beside and pull tight so that we're now exiting again from the bead that's at the end of this little ladder of beads that we're doing. Now, don't forget to hit the like button, by the way, if you haven't done so. I see we're getting a few more likes, but I want more. Uh, plus, don't forget, of course, if you've got any questions, put a big big Q at the beginning of your comment and I will see it. So now we're going to just do that once more. So if you were going to do, for example, just a two width. So you know how I did this one? I showed you it's like three columns. So if you have a look here, you've got column one, column two, and column three. If you wanted to do it thinner, you could do it with just these two columns. If you want to do it this width, you do it so that you have another set of, see down here, Seed bead crystal, seed bead crystal, seed bead crystal. This is where you define the total width of your bracelet. So I think three uh, three groups is a nice width, but you can do two if you want to make it a bit thinner, a bit finer, or you can do four if you want it to be a little bit wider. Now, with this particular project, especially at the beginning, it doesn't matter too much if your work is a little bit loose, because see how this is called the dancing cubes. By being that little bit looser, you have a sort of a nicer dancing effect, which you'll understand in a minute what I mean by this dancing effect, because the, the, the cubes, we sort of want them to sit wiggly, wobbly, higgledy, piggledy, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So again, we're going to pick up two seed beads. We're exiting from this side. We're going to loop around, back up through the same bead, Pull tight so that our seed beads are now on the very, very end. And then we're going to pass back down those two seed beads once more into the same ones we just added so that we're exiting from here. And now you can see that I thought I just added another cube. Maybe I didn't. Maybe. Oh, yeah, the seed beads. I, I was going to say I was like losing my brain for a second. I thought I added another cube and I was like, what? Where did it go? What happened? Anyway, so now we're going to pick up our final bead here. We're going to pick up one cube. We're exiting from the bottom of this and down these ones just here. That is caught on my jumper. There we go. And then just pull, 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 get it tight so that it is now in that same little row. And finally, we're going to go back up that last bead that we just added. And that's going to give us our little ladder just here. So you can see this is going to be part of row one. This will be part of row two. And this will be part of row three. Now, remember how at the very beginning I did it so that I was exiting from, I had the beads on this side, then I had the cube and the beads on that side. The reason I did that is so that this thread will now be pointing down at the bottom rather than pointing at the top. Because if you sort of started from the seed beads, your thread would be coming out here and it's a bit awkward and annoying. So I just sort of started like that so that this thread would be out of the way. Now we're going to start working back in the other direction, and that is going to allow us to start adding our rows. So this is the, the technique. We've made our base row. So if you want to make it wider, make it wider. If you want to make it thinner, make it thinner. But from here, it's a very, very simple technique, and you just repeat this technique over and over and over and over until you have the width of your bracelet. This is why this is such an easy, easy, easy project. So I'll just do one row, and then I'm going to flick it over into right-hand view. So if we just pick up, this is all you have to do just now. These are cube beads, by the way, three millimeter crystal cubes I'm working. That's a question there from Sherry. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to pick up now two seed beads, like so, and one of our crystal beads just here. So pick those up, and we're going to just go from this one here down into the bead directly beside. So for those of you who have done beading before, this is called herringbone stitch. I'm sure you'll probably recognize it. But see how the cube sort of sits on that funny higgledy piggledy wiggledy angle? That's great. That's what we want. This is what makes it a dancing cube. Plus then because they're at these funny different angles and whatnot, it allows it to sparkle from more angles when you're wearing it. So that is a really, really fun design feature that we want. So don't worry if this is not straight, you don't want it to be. So now we're exiting the bottom of this bead. We're gonna just go straight back up into the next cube. So when you pull that tight, 
That brings us into position now to add on our next one. So again, it's exactly the same. We're going to just pick up two seed beads and one of our crystals, just like that there. And we're going to pass down from the top of this bead to the top of these two seed beads, down through both, pull it tight like so, so that they're sitting nicely on top. We've got that higgledy-piggledy little crystal again. And then we're going to go from here and up into that next crystal. Caught on my jumper again. I've got a little cuff on the bottom of my jumper and it keeps catching. So clearly this jumper was not the one to be wearing because I got a nice long thread to start with. So anyway, let's do the final one and then I'm going to switch over to right hand view for the next version. Now this uh, pattern, it says, will the pattern still work with four mil and preciosa slash size 11? No, you would need to use a slightly larger seed bead. I'll tell you why in just a second. Let me just get to the end of this row and then I will explain why that doesn't work. So one last time, we're going to pick up two seed beads and one cube. So we're going to go down the two seed beads at the very, very end. One and two. There we go. Pull all the way through. And you can see now that is sitting nicely where we want it. But now you're thinking, well, where do I go up? How do I, how do I continue? Well, it's actually extremely, extremely easy to do it like this. All you have to do is go back up the cube before. And you don't need to pull tight when you do this because this will help to keep it that higgledy-piggledy shape that we want. Just pull that nice and tight. And then we're going to just go from here and directly into that cube right at the very end. See that? So our thread is going to go from the top of this bead to the bottom of that one. This is why we don't need to pull it too tight when we do this so that it doesn't make it wonky or anything like that. And there you go. That is going to bring you now back to the end, ready to continue and do your next row. So if I just turn that over very quick, you'll see that we now have ourselves back at the other side. We're starting with a cube. We've got two seed beads and a cube, two seed beads and a cube, two seed beads and a cube, ready to do it in the exact same way to do our next row. So I'm going to now answer some questions. So if you've got any questions while I do this, I'll flip it into right hand view actually, and then do one more row and then I'll start answering questions. So let's just flip it over. There we go. Now I'm a right handed person. So at this point, you would pick up, it's always the same pick up two seed beads, then a cube. You go down into the seed beads beside one and two. You pull it tight. And then see how these are not connected to each other. We're going to connect them to each other now by going up through the bottom of that crystal and into position beside the one we've just been adding. Now, you don't need to be too tight with it so that it keeps its higgledy-piggledy dancing cube shape. And then we're going to pick up two more seed beads, grab ourselves another crystal, down the two seed beads beside, back up the next crystal, which again, it's like sort of leaning itself already, making it a bit easier for us to access the hole at the bottom. Pull tight. Then two more seed beads, one and two, and one crystal cube, one of these ultra sparkly, shiny cubes. You can see they catch the light really nicely. Down those two seed beads, and just like before, we're going to pull it tight so that it's nice and firm now, and then we're going to go up through the previous cube like so, and then we're going to just go diagonally into this last little corner bead once again. It doesn't need to be pulled too tight or anything so that it sits nicely. And then we're going to flip it over so that it is now ready to do our next row. Now, Angelica, your question. It was, will the pattern still work with four mil cubes? I'm going to continue beading while I answer this. Um, so the reason that it wouldn't work, you would need to use a slightly larger seed bead. The reason that it works like this is because the three mil, uh, the seed beads just here and the three mil cube, when you see stacked side by side, they're the same height. So if you're going to use a four mil seed, uh, a four mil cube, you would need the slightly larger beads so that they match the size of your cube. That is essentially how you've got to do it. If you had, for example, like a, a six mil 
You could use a six mil cube and four seed beads. That would work fine if you've got the same one. But with the four, you might need to use like a slightly larger size eight seed beads or something. Um, so now uh, there's a question from Louise, which says, what thread are you using? I'm using the Spidalon thread, which we have got on our website. It's called Spidalon because we have managed to source it. We've chosen, we've gone through many, many different threads trying to find a really good one. So I am using Spidalon beading thread, which is the one that uh, we thought was the best. It is already bonded so that it doesn't fray. It doesn't get funny, yucky ends and stuff. It's quite strong as well. But when you work with it, uh, you get a nice, soft, supple design there. Uh, that just looks fantastic when you've got a finished piece of jewelry because it will sort of allow it to be flowing on your skin rather than being really, really stoff, uh, stiff and solid. Stoff. Stoff and solid. Stiff and solid. So, yeah, there we go. We just go up that last bead and into the very corner. Then we turn over. And, again, you just keep repeating that same process. I'll do it one last time, and then I'm going to go over to doing how to do the two color method, which the two color method is ridiculously simple. It's hardly different whatsoever, but uh, gives us another interesting effect. And I'll teach you very, very quickly how you can do that to make that stripe pattern, which I can't remember if anyone told me, which one do you prefer? Which, I mean, you can comment in and let me know once we've done a few rows on the stripe, but do you prefer it plain or do you prefer it with the stripe effect? So anyway, just one last couple of sets here. So again, a cube and uh, two seed beads down the two seed beads, pull it tight and up the one beside like that. Last one two seed beads and a cube, down the final two seed beads, then up the cube and jump across into the corner where we have that other cube as well. And just get it nicely positioned. And you can see if you're using a relatively dark thread, even though this thread is a completely wrong color. You hardly see it because it's sort of hidden in there. That I mean, obviously, if you were to get really, really zoomed in close, you would see all the threads everywhere hanging up in there. But from normal distance of people just viewing your design, there's no way anyone's ever going to see. So now that we've done that, let's go and do some stripe action, shall we? So not strike action, stripe action. So this one is my sample piece from the other day when I was trying to choose the perfect seed bead. So now uh, let's continue on with that one. And I'm going to show you when it comes to doing the stripe, it's ridiculously easy. There's hardly any difference whatsoever, which actually just before I continue... No? Okay, good, good, good. So from here, let's just put my thread on. And I'll explain to you how you get this stripe effect. Now, the way that the stripe works is based off how you started. But essentially, this, the direction of the stripe, what I mean, sorry, is off how you started. But once you have it like this, so I've grabbed myself out. I've got some of my pink crystals here, which I'm going to be using, this lovely, deep, rich orange ember, which is a very much on-trend color at the minute. It's I've seen it in so many shops, this bright, vibrant orange, uh, which I really, really like, actually. But uh, I'll grab myself out a few extra cubes as well, just so that I can do... Oh, actually, I should have enough for now. One, two... Yeah, I can do like four rows worth with this. Okay, so now... Once we want to do our two color method, it's pretty much almost exactly the same. So this time we're going to pick up two of our seed beads, which in this particular instance, I have chosen this lovely, very rich blush pink color, which I'm going to be working with just now. There it is just there. You can see it. Uh, it's a color lined seed bead. So it gives it like a nice soft effect. So this one is like a, a transparent seed bead, uh, crystal and seed bead. So they work nicely together. So I'm going to go with two of my pink seed beads 
And then I'm going to grab myself. Firstly, I'm going to start with one pink cube. And I'm going to go down into the seed bead beside. And we're going to just pull that nice and tight, get it in position if it needs to, and exactly the same up into the bead beside. So now, because we're doing a second color, we're going to alternate to the other color now. This will give us that stripe. So again, we're going to pick up two of our seed beads, but this time we're going to choose our other color bead there. So now we'll go down exactly the same into, pull that tight, get it in position, and go up into the next little crystal. And then we're going to pick up two more seed beads and one of the alternate color again. And we're going to go down into the last one. We're going to do the exact same turnaround process. We're going to go up that crystal and now into the end one just here, and we're going to flip it over. So now, to get the stripe effect, what we're going to do is the exact same pattern again. So last time we did pink, orange, pink. This time we're going to also do pink, orange, pink. So once again, we're going to pick up two of our seed beads and one pink color. Down those two seed beads, like so up the crystal beside, and pull tight. Then we're going to go two seed beads and a little orange fella just here. There we are. Down and across. And finally, we're going to do one last one, two seed beads and a pink. Then down these two, and we're going to do our turnaround now, up the cube, and into the corner. So that's part one of getting a stripe pattern. Part two now is we're going to do the alternate uh, pattern. So we're going to go orange, pink, orange, and then we're going to do a second row of orange, pink, orange. And that's how you get the effect. You just go pink, orange, pink, Pink, orange, pink, then orange, pink, orange, orange, pink, orange, pink, orange, pink, pink, orange, pink, orange, pink, orange, orange, pink, orange. There you go. Try saying that 10 times fast. That's that's not far, not hard, not too easy, sorry. Uh, so now there we go. We're going to pick up two. Then we go have our orange one down into the bead beside and up. Then two more seed beads and a pink cube down into the two seed beads. Pull it nice and tight. Ooh. And then essentially we just go up the end. Ooh, I've just lost my thread off uh, my needle off the, the thing there. Where'd I put that? Just drop the needle. Let's put that back on there. Here we go. This is the handy thing about using spidal on thread is that it's really easy to just thread back on to your needle. I bet you because I've said that. Oh, no, it's back on. There we go. Easy enough. So, yeah, now that we've done that, we're going to go back up the bead beside. And now two more. And an orange one. So you can see it's pretty easy to get that stripe pattern happening. So yeah, do we prefer the single color or do we prefer the, the, the double color version? Do you, do you like the stripe or do you like the single? Ignore this yellow seed bead, by the way. This, this yellow seed bead is not the one I chose. I thought I would test it out to see how it looks. But in the end, I went with this lovely hot pink color just because when you have it on your skin, it looks really, really lovely and sort of gives you a contrast between those ultra sparkly pink ones, and then that really rich orange tone there as well. So I'll just flip that over. And again, we'll just do, I'm just going to do one. I'm not going to do the whole row. We're going to pick up two more and an orange down the bead beside and up. And you can see, there you go. That's going to give you 
that stripe pattern happening. So now, once we've sort of done that, see how you've got that, that stripe happening? You've got the diagonals. It makes it really, really effective. But yeah, who prefers the stripe? Who prefers the single color? Tina says the single color. Nancy says the stripe. I want to know what you think. Comment in, let me know. And now I'm going to show you how we can reduce it down. Actually, first things first, I'm going to show you how to extend your thread if you run out. I showed this the other day, but uh, I'll show it again today. So grab yourself a new length of thread, whatever is comfortable for you to use. And we're going to just give that a little snip. Uh, so there we go. Grab yourself a new thread, and I'm going to use what is called a... Uh, oh, it's gone from my brain. A uh, sheet bend knot. So anyway, the way a sheet bend knot works, you just fold your little thread over into like a... A loop like this. See that sort of shape just here? Wait, let's put it a little closer. So thread number one, your short leftover thread, pinch it into a loop kind of like this and hold it. Then you take the start of your new thread and you just take it inside. If you make this loop smaller, by the way, the funny thing is the smaller the loop is, the easier this technique becomes which sounds counterintuitive, but it actually is true. So now you can go up into the, from underneath, we're going into that loop and we'll just pull it out the way slightly. And so now we've coming, we're currently on the top of our loop here and we're gonna go underneath that loop like so. So now my thread goes under the loop just there, which I'll pull it a little bit more through. So you can see, there you go. And then we can just take this bit over the top of both sides of this little loop that we created at the beginning. And we're gonna put it inside of this loop that we've created at the top. So through there, just keep it, pull it tight. There we go. And now make sure it goes over the top of these two. So if I zoom in, we are over the top, over the top, and then underneath here. And then when you pull this tight, you can grab these two together like so, just sort of pull a little bit more. There you go, grab those two together, then you hold these two together and you just pull them apart. And there is that perfect little knot ready to go. And you can see it is now very, very firm. You can just give it a little tug to get it super duper firm if you need to. Pull on both ends, there you go. And there you go, that is now ready to start beading with, see? Easy. It's a really, really simple little knot. And if you want to just pull it again and again and again to get it extra, extra firm, you'll see that creates that little knot there now. And we're ready. You can sort of just, I mean, if you wanted to, you could cut these little threads a bit shorter, which maybe I'll do that a bit later. But for now, I'll leave it where it is. And then once we've done that, you can just continue beading like normal. So if I take my new thread, the other end, you can just thread that back through your needle, pull it tight, and then there you go. Look, you've got this extended thread just here. And just to prove it to you, and because I don't want it to get in the way, I'm going to cut this thread a little bit shorter, cut the other one a little bit shorter as well, get my tail thread out the way. And now I can just bead like normal. So again, it would be exactly the same. You can see, if I even if I just pass through these beads here. Because this thread is very fine, if you have a thick thread, this can be a little difficult, but because I'm using quite a fine thread, that little knot is very, very small and goes straight through the holes of your beads really, really easily. And you can just continue beading away like normal. So I'll do one last row, just get it through that little crystal hole there. See, look, see how it gets a little bit messy? This is just that little leftover tail bit. There we go, see? And then once we've done that, you can go two seed beads and a crystal, down the two there, pull that tight, and you'll see that just disappears again into your work. And once the reason I wanted to make my little threads smaller at the beginning, but I got lucky, is that the knot hides just outside this hole, but it's going to disappear into these two seed beads right now. So I'll go into here, 
and down this little pair here. Pull that tight, and look at that, gone. Disappeared. You would never even know that it had been there ever. So now let's just keep going. I'm going to do one more row, and then I'm going to show you how to reduce it down just so that my little knot doesn't cause me grief while I'm showing you how to reduce it. So here we are. Let's just pull that through. What did you think of that, by the way? Um, uh, there we go. And then Lois says, that knot is awesome. Uh, is that thread like Wildline or Fireline? No, it isn't. So wild, uh, Wildfire and Fireline are essentially types of fishing line this one here is like more like a, a, a it's a it's a single monofilament thread so rather than um like plastic fishing line it's it's a you know it's it's a nylon thread so that's why it's so soft the 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 fire line is very good if you want to have a really, really firm tension but I find in general it's much nicer to have a soft a soft, uh, soft drape for your jewelry when you're making it into jewelry, and uh, it's much, much softer that way. Like if you were making charms or something, like with brick stitch or whatever, then maybe fire line is better for that. But I think just doing normal bead stitches, nylon threads are a little bit better. So anyway, there's that last little one. And I'm going to show you how to reduce it down so that we can now start adding on our clasp. Lois says, more like Eslon. Yes, it's more like Eslon, but this one is bonded. So Eslon is not bonded, so it frays really, really easily. But this one uh, doesn't doesn't fray because it's bonded, which is like almost having like a, a wax coating over the top of it. So anyway, this time to reduce it down, this is where things are a teeny weeny little bit different. So we're going to go up these two seed beads to finish rather than going into the cube at the end. And now this time, what we're going to do, we're going to just grab ourselves. The, 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 the order that we do it is a little teeny weeny bit different. So this time, we're going to go back in the other direction. So I'll just turn it over once again. And now this time, we pick up one crystal and then two seed beads. One, two, like that. So now when you go from here, you go down the crystal beside, which is... Because it's a bit wiggly, higgledy, piggledy, it can be in funny places, but that's okay. Like so. And then you can just go up into the two seed beads beside. Pull that tight like this. And now we're going to go one of these cubes once again. So this is where it's a little bit different. And now down into the next cube like so. I'm going to pull it tight, and I'm going to just join this here. I'm going to go back straight into those seed beads that we added in the row before, and up into this cube bead, directly above. And now when I flip it over, because we're exiting from a cube, see that? It just reduces it down a teeny weeny bit. We're going to pick up, we're exiting from a cube again, so we pick up two seed beads first, and our final cube, and we're going to go down those two seed beads, and then we're going to go back up the cube that's previous, and the two final seed beads, which will bring us out to the top of our work just here, like that, and you can see that gives you this nice triangular shape happening that you can then use to start adding on our little clasp. So the way that we can do our clasp, there's a couple of different ways, uh, but the one that I quite like is to do it like a right angle weave, because then it's really easy to just go round and round and round as many times as you need. So from here, I'm going to just pick up one last little bead. I'm going to go down this cube just here, and then to keep it nice as we've been doing it, down and directly back up through these two just beside, which will make them a bit closer to each other, 
oops, get that thread out the way. There we are. And now into that little seed bead that we added right on the end. And from here, we can use our right angle weave technique to add on our clasp. Now, I have a clasp here somewhere, but what did I do with it? I had a bag with a clasp in it from the kit that I made this one from. What did I do with you? Where have you gone, Mr. Clasp? Do you know what? It's right here in front of me, I'm sure. But I cannot find it. Hmm. How strange. Yeah, but the kit comes with a lobster and extension chain so that you can make it easily to your size. But, of course... Now I can't find my clasp. Ah, oh, here. It's right in front of me. It was literally right in front of me on the table. Ha! Huh. I'm blind. Uh, usually this one would come with the silver, but this was the one from doing the, the other kit. So this one is the one from uh, just here. We're going to now go through this little bit just here. So I'll do it with the lobster. Why not? So let's pick up two seed beads just like so we'll go through our clasp and two more seed beads. And because we're doing this in a right angle weave, essentially what a right angle weave is just like a little circle of beads. So we're going to go from here, loop around and back through the other side of this bead. And when we pull that tight, you've got a little circle just there. Two beads, then the clasp, two beads. And then we're back to where we started. And it makes it really easy to just go round and round and round to secure it um, rather than having to weave down into your design and then come back up and then down and up and down and all over the place just to get back to where you need to be to secure it. By doing it in this sort of right angle weave circle, you've got your little piece just there ready to be secured in straight away. So already within a few seconds, I've now done three little repetitions of making it more secure. And Heather says I should look in my cup. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't have a tea today. My, uh, my Matthew mug is on its absolute last legs. I don't think it's like, I mean, the mug itself is fine, but all the, the artwork is gone. It, uh, it says it doesn't have much of my name written on it anymore. So anyway, now I'll just show you how you can finish it off. And that's literally all there is to it. So we're going to go down into this bead. Isn't that an easy project, by the way? This is like such an easy, easy, easy design. So now we'll just go down. And once we're between two of the seed beads, I think that's a good spot to tighten. So take your needle underneath the thread between the two seed beads just there. And back up, pull it tight, and there you go. That's a nice blanket stitch knot just there. Uh, there's a question here from Serena. Could you use a size 8 Delica bead instead of a cube? I mean, you can use whatever bead you want instead of a cube. You don't have to use a cube. The only thing is that you need your two seed beads beside to be the same height as whatever your main bead is. So these two side by side is the same height as one cube. If you've got a uh, an 8 mil Delica, you would need to make sure that you do it in a way that you've got two beads beside or however many beads. It doesn't have to be two. It can be three. It can be two. It can be one. Uh, that gives you that same size side by side. Otherwise, it gets like really wonky uh, and looks a bit funny. So there you go. I've just done another knot. We'll just weave down through there, pull it through. And I mean, I could even go upwards if I wanted to up these beads here, down back again, you know, just weave around to wherever you want, wherever you think it needs a bit of extra security. This is a good opportunity to do that as well. And then just cross and around. And then eventually when you've done, you feel like you've done enough knots, just take your scissors and cut that thread off because it's done. It's finished. It's tied off. It's secure. And you have that lovely little cloth ready to go on the end of your work just there looking great. So that's how you do that. And then essentially all you have to do is just grab your tail thread and you do the reverse on this side. So now just remember when you're exiting cubes, 
you use two seed beads, then a cube. When you're exiting from the seed beads, you use the, the cube, then the two seed beads. So that's the way it's different. So then you just go back, forth, until you've got it nice and pointy, and then you take your extension chain here and you do the exact same attachment if you want to either to a closed jump ring that you can attach to the bottom of this or just as i prefer to do just go straight onto this little piece just here like that now if you enjoyed that if you want to make it yourself if you want it to be nice and easy you want to get the instructions you want to get the beads, you want to get the thread, you want to get a needle, you want to get it all together in one lovely bundle because you say, hey, do you know what? I'm going to make that for somebody or I'm going to make it for myself. It's going to be perfect for New Year's Eve. Like, for example, this black and silver one is perfect for evening wear. If I zoom out a touch, there you go. Perfect for evening wear. This one, maybe the black and silver. I really, really like this one. Uh, but if you were going to get them from us, if you check the link there in the description. So if you have a look, uh, if you are on Facebook, the description is up above. If you're on YouTube, it's down below. You may need to click the little button that says more so that you can read everything and see all the different links that are there. But once you do that, you'll be able to come to the Bead Spider website, which if you've never seen that before, it looks a lot like this. You can just type in, if you read it, just down there, www.beadspider.co.uk or use the links in the description. That is the best way to find the exact page. And you will come to our website, which here it is just here for today. And you can see right there on the homepage, we have our lovely Dancing Cubes crystal bracelet on the front cover. So this is the one that we have just been making. This is the single color in the purple. Uh, and we're going to now, if you want, the link in the description, if you just click this big picture right here, it will take you to where you can view that page right there exactly ready to start making your purchases. So if you have a look, if you want to get the purple one, there it is just there, Violet Vogue. You can see we went for some really fun names, Violet Vogue, Turquoise Tango, which is the one I've just been demonstrating, the Tangelo Twist. Uh, and then we have the Strawberry Samba, which I showed you as well. The Jade Jive, which uh, Rhonda asked about. This is that green one that she asked about at the beginning. There it is there. Or if you want the Midnight Mamba, which is the black and silver, you can get it just there. Now, I should mention to you, I do also have just the pattern if you want to get just the pattern on its own. But if you're buying a kit... You do not need to buy the pattern as well. You get the pattern included in the mail, in the post, sent to you with your kit. But if you fancy a 15% discount, we also do that. There you go. You can see this is the full version of that Tangelo twist that we did with that lovely orange crystal and that lovely pink crystal with that rich future one just there. But yeah, as I said, discount 15% off is really really easy to get just click this one just here dancing cubes any three or more 15% off and if you read it just there it says click below to select your colors so here they are select options is right there you click that button and it will take you to the page where you can get your discount so if you're in the US by the way I should mention uh the prices are in either US dollars or in Euro. They are both right there. You can choose which currency is best for you. And then essentially you just scroll on down and you, you say, I want to get that turquoise tango that he was demonstrating with. I loved it. In fact, I want to get two of them. You can do that. And then you can say, and I really like the stripe one. I want to do the stripe. Add that in as well. And then there you go. You can add that to basket. Now, I should mention, if you've only got two things in the basket, it will be grayed out and it'll say, please choose a third. So if you want to get the Midnight Mamba, you can get a third, but you're not limited to three. If you want to get lots of them and get lots of Christmas presents sorted, the great thing is because it has the extension chain, you can make it for people and they will be able to wear it because they can just choose the point on the extension chain that works for them. If you want to say, I'm going to get four of them or five of them, or all six, I want to get all six colors. They are all there. You add them to basket 
and you get the discount on every single one that you get. So once you've got three, anything after that, if you want to get two of this, so you've got seven, if you want to get eight, if you want to get 35 of them, we don't care. As long as you've got at least three, you get your 15% discount on every single last one of them. So for example, on this one, if you've got one, two, and three, instead of being in pounds, 44.85, it is in fact 38 and 13 pence. Or if you prefer, if you're in wanting it in US dollars, you just click on that and it will change, but I'm pretty sure it's automatically. So instead of 58, it's uh, less than 50. So that's 15% off. You just choose the three that you like. Job done. If you want to do it in euros, you can do it in euros. But yeah, it's entirely up to you. So each one you can see there, instead of 18 euros 25, it is 15, 51. So very, very good bargain deals there for everybody to be had. Um, of course, if we just head back to the homepage, if you just wanted to get the pattern, you can do that one as well. But otherwise, we have lots of different patterns you can check out, which brings me on to the uh, the the little link that is there in the description for signing up to our newsletter, which you can also do. Annoyingly, it is just out of screen. It's just here. See how it says join our newsletter. It's just there. If you click on that as well, aha, there it is. It's showing. If you click on that just there, it will bring up a little pop-up box. You can put your email address in and we will send you a five pound voucher to try out any of our beading patterns. Plus then you'll be on our email list and you will know every Friday, he, it's time for a bit of jewelry tutorial learning. And uh, you'll get emails on a Friday just before we're going to go live. Um, and it will tell you exactly what we're going to be doing and so forth. Now, I see we've had a couple of questions. Trish says, how wide is the finished bracelet? That is a good question. So I would say the width of this is probably just short of an inch. I would say this is probably like seven eighths of an inch. It's probably about two, two, two centimeters, maybe, maybe a tiny bit more. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about the full width there. So you can see on my hairy wrist, uh, that's about the, the the width of it. But as as I said, and especially if you missed it at the beginning, go back and watch the beginning because I did tell you how you can make it wider if you want it wider, how you can make it finer if you want it to be thinner. Because I mean, if you really wanted to, uh, you could just do it one row and then do it really long so that it wraps around a couple of times. That could look really, really cool as well. Um, that's another another design idea, design suggestion there. Or if you just prefer slightly finer jewelry, just do it with two rows. Why not? It's up to you. So anyway, that is uh, Trisha's question just there. And now, uh, and now, for those of you who are brand new, just like Nancy who is here, she said, this is my first time watching you. I will now subscribe. Well, thank you very, very much, Nancy. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And anyone else who's new, let me know what you thought of it as well. Lois here thought it was a really nice bracelet. She says, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Lois. In fact, let me just pop it over back to my face because we're going to be finishing off now. We were nice and quick. Didn't take too long today. Only an hour. Amy is still here. She says, very cool design. Amber says, I love the bracelet. Um, Amy said, uh, uh, Amy also said, uh, as well as very cool design, she said, they do and pretty fast. Oh, right. That's about the shipping. Yes. Do you ship to the US? We absolutely do. We have a flat, flat rate, flat rate, uh, a flat rate shipping that we have, uh, which it doesn't matter how much you order. Uh, you can get a, a huge order. You just have that nice flat rate shipping price. You just pay the one price and you can spend as much as you like. You'll only pay that amount in shipping, which I think is somewhere in the region of about $10, $10.20 or something, something like that. And we will send it to you. We don't care how much you order. Massive order if you like. Now, Tina also says... I like the turquoise one and the black one. Now, Purple Penny, she always says this one. She says, I'm not sure I could do the wonky beads. I'd be wanting to straighten them up all the time. But as you said, the that's half the fun of this design is them being all higgledy-piggledy and wiggly-wobbly and so forth. Because it's like that, you can see how many more faces, 
catch the light when you move, which when you're wearing your jewelry, you want it to be catching the light as much as possible. And when you have so many higgledy-piggledy faces, you've got so many more directions that the light can be hitting from. And look how much it sparkles. It makes it a big, big difference by being all wonky. But if you prefer them straight, you can always do it in like a square stitch rather than herringbone. The exact same kit in a square stitch would also work for that as well. But anyway, that is it from me for today. I hope you had lots of fun. Make sure you subscribe and like our channel all of those different things. Don't forget, of course, if you missed the beginning, you can watch this video again on Facebook, on YouTube, or on the Bead Spider website. It's available in all three places. Um, if you want that five pound pattern voucher, sign up to our newsletter, which you can do it directly from the website where I showed you, or you can do it from the link there in the description where you're watching. I hope you had lots of fun. I hope you learned something new. Uh, I hope that you will have a go and make your own. If you haven't done so before, make sure you join up to our Facebook group because if you have a go and you make it, which I go, I want to see you guys having a go and making these. And in fact, as lots of people said, I want to have a go with four mil cubes, like I think Angelica said. Uh, somebody else said that they wanted to have a go with the Delica beads. Have a go. Make them up. Put them on our Facebook group. Post them so that you can share it with others and say, hey, I made it from this video, but here's my twist on it. That's what I want to see. I want to see you guys having a go and seeing what you come up with and then sharing it with everybody else. Anyway, don't forget, comment down below if you liked the plane or the stripe. If you have any questions as well, even after the stream, we check back and answer those. So comment in at any time. We're always there to make sure that you get the answers that you want. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy that. I will be back again next week for another tutorial, same time, same place. So that's 3 p.m. in the UK. If the clocks are changing this weekend, it'll probably go back to being 10 a.m. on the west, on the east coast, 7 a.m. on the east, on the west coast, probably somewhere in the region of like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. if you're in Australia. Uh, it'll be 4 p.m. if you're in Europe. You know, wherever it is in the world, if you want to know, the easiest way is just go onto Google and type what time is 3 p.m. in the UK, and it will say it's X time and tell you based on your time zone. But anyway, thank you very, very much. Uh, as Purple Penny says, have a good bonfire night if you celebrate it. Renske is still here. She says thanks again. Angelica says, have a great weekend, everyone. Nancy says, thank you, Matt, and I enjoyed it very much. Uh, you explain in a way that makes it look easy. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Trish says, I fancy trying with a three-strand magnetic clasp. That's why I asked. Fair enough. Um, Irina says, I love the design as well. Tina is still here as well. And we're dwindling back down. We got almost up to 100, but thank you to those 50 of you who are still sticking with us right to the end. Have a lovely weekend, and I will see you all same time, same place next weekend. So thank you for joining me, and bye-bye.